I've been a huge advocate of self-learning ever since high school, and to this day, as I continue on in the university, I still rely mostly on what I teach myself. I strongly believe that proper self-study is the absolute tier 1 skill, the importance of which cannot be overestimated. But when it comes to teaching yourself, be it a high school class or a data analysis technique that you need for your postgraduate research, it's a slippery slope. There is a lot of stuff you can do wrong that would lower the efficiency of time you put into that. In this video, I will talk about some of the most fundamental pillars behind any successful self-learning journey that I wish I knew sooner. My name is Artem, I'm a computational neuroscience student and researcher. Here we talk about the brain, both the theory of how it works under the hood, as well as practice of how to study and learn more effectively. If you're interested, consider subscribing to the channel not to miss anything. This video is sponsored by Shortform. Have you ever decided to read more, but got lost in the variety of books, not knowing which one is worth your time? Or wanted to quickly refresh your memory about a particular book that you read a while ago? Well, short form solves both of those problems. It's a platform for super-powered book summaries. They are far more detailed than anything you'll find on something like Blinkist, and they contain interactive exercises and author insights, which enhance the learning experience. The existing library of books is really impressive. They cover a lot of different genres, including science, psychology, and education. Additionally, Shortform publishes new book guides and articles every week. I personally use this tool to extract key ideas from books, both on pre- and post-processing stages. For example, this video is to a large extent based on the book Ultra Learning by Scott Young. I've read Ultra Learning over a year ago, and Shortform, which by the way has a brilliant summary of this book, has been a great help in preparing the script. To get 5 days of unlimited access and 20% discount on annual subscription, Join Shortform through my special link, or click the link in the description. Now, back to the video. Scott Young, the author of the book, describes ultra-learning as an act of deliberate, self-paced learning of something you are passionate about, with extreme focus, commitment, and immersion into the topic, with direct application of knowledge. Now, there is a lot to unpack in this definition. In fact, Young distinguishes nine core principles behind any successful self-learning endeavor. You can read about all of them in exclusive detail in the book. In this video, I decided to make an emphasis on only three of those principles, the ones that were most helpful and most eye-opening, at least to me. So let's start with meta-learning. To explain the concept of meta-learning, I really like the following analogy. Imagine you are planning to go on quite a dangerous trip in the mountains. Now, you wouldn't just grab random items, stuff them into your pockets, and walk out into the sunset. Instead, you need to thoroughly plan where you will go, examine the trails, read the weather forecast, and decide what to pack with you. And similarly, with intellectual journeys. When you decide to embark on a self-learning project, for example, teaching yourself how to code, you shouldn't just open the first random website or a textbook you see and commit to it. Instead, before actually sitting down to learn something, you need to do what's called a meta-learning research. Meta-learning is learning how to properly learn a particular subject. It's about understanding how knowledge in this field is structured and how it should be approached. There are three most important questions that you need to answer for yourself. Why, what, and how. To enhance the learning process and its results, it's vitally important to truly understand why you want a particular subject, and in which context this knowledge will be later applied. For example, let's say you want to learn linear algebra. If you are a computer programmer, you'll probably want to make more emphasis on computational and applicational aspects of it, and not stress too much about the rigorous proofs of the theorems and abstract concepts like the axioms of vector spaces. If you are a pure mathematician, however, the aforementioned approach will be flipped, you can figure this out by googling the subject of your interest along with your end goal. For example, linear algebra for computer science or statistics for neuroscientists. It's also a great idea to ask the people who already achieved your end goal about their opinion on this. Next, you need to make yourself familiar with what you will be paying attention during your intellectual endeavor. Research the subject, its main definitions, see what comes up again and again. For example, it's a great practice to skim 
through tables of contents of different resources. What's essential will be in every single textbook, while less important things will be seen less frequently. Another good tip is to play around with the Wikipedia. Go to the starting page of the big topic and begin reading. It doesn't matter if you encounter words and formulas you don't understand. We're not trying to learn the content of the subject itself, only what central ideas it consists of. Click on hyperlinks and see how the concepts relate to each other and which definitions and theorems seem to be foundational. Once you can roughly orient yourself around the subject, it's time to determine how you will go about learning it. It's about the particular resources you will use. If this is a textbook type of subject, for example chemistry or math, do an internet search which textbooks are recommended for self-studying or use the existing university curriculum on websites like MIT OCW. If this is more of a skill, like coding, search what internet resources and platforms people recommend. Don't underestimate the importance of meta-learning. This is a crucial step, and it will pay back in the future. Now, once you're done with meta-loading research, it's time to get your hands dirty. And probably the most important thing that can increase the quality of your learning is proper focus. In fact, focus is so important that I have two separate videos dedicated to that topic. But in short, be aware that there is a physiological reason why you can't multitask. Every time you switch attention to something else, even if it's something seemingly quick, like checking your Twitter after every paragraph you read, you literally lose cognitive momentum. That's why it's vitally important to eliminate all sorts of distractions that can potentially hijack your cognitive resources. If you want to take your learning to the next level, you should acquire knowledge in the same context as it will be later applied. And here's what it means. Let's say you want to learn Python for data analysis. The absolute best way to learn is to code as much as possible. Playing around with open data sets, doing practice problems from the web, visualizing the data, etc. But it might feel much more comfortable not to do any of this dirty work and just endlessly consume YouTube videos and seminars on this topic without writing a single line of code. This gives you an illusion of moving towards your goal, but in the long run, this hardly gives any results if you want to get stuff done. And this is a problem that after years of formal education, we get so used to the abstract, idealized problems that pursuing real-life applications of this very knowledge makes us uncomfortable. It happened to me during my sophomore year in the university, when we had our statistics class. I absolutely hated all of those statistical tests, because it seemed too abstract and not motivated at all. Of course, somewhere in the back of my mind, I knew that the day would come and this would be useful, but at the moment, I couldn't just grasp all of those assumptions, uh, parametric versus non-parametric, ANOVA and other stuff. But almost a year later, when I became a part of a research group, my supervisor told me to check the significance of the results we acquired. Now, at the time, I didn't remember anything from our statistics class, so I had to research the hypothesis testing on my own almost from scratch. But this time, it was different. Notice. Because I had a concrete problem I was motivated to solve, the process of learning the required knowledge was a. much more enjoyable and b. drastically more efficient. Of course, you don't always have the lab to motivate you on a self-learning journey. Here's a couple of strategies for you to try in this case. 1. Personal projects When learning how to code or how to do graphics design, don't phrase your goal in the way I want to learn X. It's a great intrinsic long-term motivation, but it's not actionable. Instead, assign yourself a project that you want to complete. For example, I want to create the Python script for plotting fractals. Or I will make this animation short. 2. Immersion Environment you are in can drastically affect your learning. This is why universities, despite the obvious problems, can in some aspects be useful. Because when you are part of this community, and you learn as a part of the group, this kind of interaction pushes you forward. So, even when you are on a self-studying quest, it's a great idea to 
immerse yourself into the environment where the, your target skill is practiced and routinely constantly applied. For example, when learning a foreign language, you could join these kind of clubs where people meet in places like libraries and coffee shops and practice the target language together. To sharpen your skill of public speaking, there are these discussion clubs as well. 3. Simulation When you are learning in preparation for something, and that knowledge will be later applied in well-defined, specific circumstances, it's a great idea to replicate them, to prepare in advance. For example, when I was preparing for my TOEFL exam, I did these practice tests in a nice and cozy environment, I was sitting at home, drinking tea and listening to lo-fi music, so, and I felt pretty confident when walking to the actual exam. But during the test, the experience was drastically different. I was in a single room with a lot of people making all sorts of different noises, and in addition to that, I got super stressed by this huge timer in the middle of the screen that shows you how much time you have left. Now, when I go to my next TOEFL test, I will try to prepare for that environment in advance, or at least get used to the timer. And it's a good practice in general. You can study for a test in the same room, empty classroom, where it will be held. Such preparation, even though it might seem weird at the beginning, actually helps your brain to transfer knowledge and skills between two different contexts. Drill. This is the strategy that nicely complements directness. In fact, they should go hand in hand, alternating each other. You see, while directness gives you basically the big picture, the entire context of how the knowledge will be later applied, drill is when you pick specific points and work on them in isolation. These specific points are usually the bottlenecks, specific aspects that you feel like might be slowing you down. For example, let's say you're learning Python and you set up a data visualization project for yourself. And on that path, you realize that you often get friction and the feeling of being stuck when dealing with NumPy vector operators. Then what you should do is dedicate a few hours to catch up on that, check out the documentation thoroughly, and maybe play with examples in an empty notebook. And then, once you finally feel like you get the grip, you go back to your main project. Everything should go much smoother now. You can see how there is this direct drill cycle. You identify your weakest points, zoom in on them, practice, and then zoom out for the bigger picture, and repeat. That's all I wanted to focus on today. Of course, self-learning is actually a very complicated topic. It's kind of a science of itself, which is impossible to cover fully in one or even handful of videos. But those four aspects, meta-learning, followed by a sequence of highly focused direct and drill cycles can get you so, so much. But don't worry, there is more to come. So stay tuned. Until then, if you like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Goodbye and thanks for the interesting knowledge.